Hello, Kit Heads. We are talking Kit, the home of the greatest football kit content for football kit fanatics by football kit fanatics. I am, as always, double A. And we are here for a brand new series on the channel. Really, really excited to get this series underway. If you've ever watched or listened to one of the main podcasts, which has, has now sadly passed away, you could say, we had one feature on there, Desert Island Kits, and it's where we had a guest on the show. And we would speak to them about shirts in their collection and picking a home shirt, an away shirt, and a third slash goalkeeper or wildcard shirt that they would take away to a desert island with them. So with the, the podcast ending, we thought, let's keep this this feature going, but make it its own series on the, on the, 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 the channel. Um, and it's a nice short video. We don't get lots of them on Talking Kit. As you know, with full kit rankers, it, it seems to go on forever and ever. So we kind of reworked it and we're going to sit down with shirt collectors from far and wide and sit down and see if we can get them to pick five shirts from their collection that they would take on a desert island with them. Like I say, I'm really excited for this series. We've got some great guests lined up, but I thought, what's the best way we could start this series? And I think we've probably picked the, the perfect guest for me. I mean, is that... Been collecting probably for since before I was born, and it's a match worn collection. I think the best way to start a collect a series is with a match worn collection and a collector. Uh, and I'm really happy that he's uh, agreed to come on uh, and speak to us and pick his shirts for Desert Island Kits. And it's it's great pleasure to introduce today on this show, uh, Mick Clifford. Good evening, mate. Are you okay? I'm fine, Aaron. How are you? Thanks for having me here. I'm no, I'm really, I'm really well. Like I say, I'm. Really happy that you've uh, agreed to come on and share, you know, five shirts from what you've shown before we, we started rolling is a, an unbelievable collection, to be honest, mate. It's... Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> it, it's overwhelming, even for me sometimes. It's just, at times, it just gets out of hand in the way. No, uh, I could... uh, I've been collecting for oof, probably since... 40 years, I'll say. Oof. I've been That's trying bad. to get shirts. And they, they're they not getting easier to get. They're getting harder. No, I can imagine, yeah. I think we all we all see sort of certain other creators, you know, the match-worn space is, is really quite, quite a tricky one these days, you know, especially when you look at stadiums and you've got young kids with uh, yeah, carbon and board up. Garbo Ben, can I have a shirt? It has actually happened to me where I've been promised a shirt by a player a couple of times and they come over and give you the shirt and you just you take a look down and there's about a hundred small kids eyes at you and <laughs> you just yeah. have to give it to them. You just, I, mean, I mean, it's a football shirt. You can't just say, no, it's mine. You have to say, oh, do you want it? And they're all saying, yes, Miss Stone, I'll run away. So. At least don't at give least... it to me after the game. Don't give it to me yeah. after the game. Yeah, that's that's it. Um, I mean, I mean, do you even know how many you've got now in your collection? Um, I've done a little count. I think it's seven hundred and twelve. Seven hundred and twelve. Wow, that's mm. of those. Sorry. I know over six hundred are definitely worn. There's a hundred and twelve that could be issued. Yeah. <laughs> There's over six hundred one. Bit of, that's mate. That that is that is just unbelievable. As, as a collector, I mean, I mean that is just something to be very yeah, envious of. Thanks, but it's. it's uh, <laughs> I, I mean, there are times you just think it, it just can't be worth it. No, oh, it is. I mean, oh, it is. If anyone's watching this back, video, it definitely is worth it, mate. It definitely is. Yeah, but, but even if you go back uh, to. 98 or 2002, 2003, I was at uh, home and away shirt, and yeah. it was um, using the lead in the Caribou Cup in the FA Cup. It was the same shirt, but if you're like a completist and you want them all, there's like three lead shirts, there's three goalkeeper shirts, there's a Caribou Cup shirt, home and away could be third, FA Cup shirt, home and away third. Yeah, now we got into Europe. Uh, there's a conference league home away third, so it could be uh, 20, 20, 20 shirts in a season. Mad. So 
That's crazy. And I tried to get uh, all of them. Yeah. So that's it, that... it is actually, but it's great. It's great. It's a hobby, but at times it's like a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It is. It's yeah. like having uh, two jobs because you <laughs> have to get it, you have to find it. You have to. Yeah. Just before we get into your your five shirts, um, how how easy was it picking your five? Because I imagine with that many, I will, it was, uh, took some thinking. No, it was uh, pretty easy. Uh, Julian Dick King got in there. Julian Dick, he, he almost got in there, but he, I had to sneak Paolo Di Canio in. He had to get in uh, to well, get in the Paolo Di Canio. Uh, you know, he was a genius. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was. Uh, so any any others that maybe just missed out? I know you mentioned Julian Dix. There's any others? Uh, Julian Dix. If I could have had ten, I would have put in the Julian Dix, uh, Tony Coffey, um, Frank McAvenny, probably an Alvin Martin, and could have sneaked in a Dimitri Payet. Oh, which, ooh, which is a little bit. Um, Controversial being a West Ham fan, but he, he was just an unbelievable player, yes. and he just he just had to go after the talent as well. Let's get into your five then. So at number five, let's see how you tell us what your your first. Right, is. they're in the no particular order. There's uh, the Paolo there Canio is. shirt. The Canio, yeah, yeah. Uh, he signed it on the front. Ah. Oh. Even better, even better. Um, he had promised me this shirt at the beginning of the year. He gave it to me after uh, we played home to Tottenham. So it would have been the 99 season. And I, I did not think to sign it straight off because it was absolutely soaking wet. It was just, <laughs> it, it was just all wet. And... Um, about a year afterwards, uh, I went to the training ground because I knew he was injured, and yeah. we were playing away to Warsaw in the League Cup. Jermaine Defoe made his debut, and I knew that Paolo Di Canio was injured and he isn't uh, training, so I went to the ground, yeah, and uh, I was going to ask him to sign it. I was like, so it was absolutely pissing down the rain. And I could hear a crazy guy just singing at the top of his voice, Paolo Di Canio, the Paolo Di Canio song. And I thought, please stop, please stop. And it was actually yeah, Paolo himself singing, <laughs> his, singing his own bloody song. And he came out in the rain. He came over to my car. He had a towel on a pair of uh, flip-flops. And he got into my car. I signed the shirt. And we talked for about half an hour. Love that. That's, it, that's amazing. It was, it, it was a good job that nobody came by because it's like he just had a towel on. And it was like, <laughs> try, try to, someone actually come and buy. I was going to start with Paolo Giannio and he's, he's wearing a towel. No, absolutely great bloke. Unbelievable, unbelievable player. And you yeah. didn't know if. if it would be an angry Di Canio who would turn up if it would be uh, like, uh, I've got a hump today, so I'm not going to play Paolo Di Canio. It was just yeah. unbelievable to see him. He had to get in and he gave me that shirt. Another shirt. Now, next, the next one. We wore during 83, 84, and it was worn by club legend. Billy Bonds. Oh, mate. Uh, Billy Bonds shirt. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I know. I just took it out of plastic just for you, Aaron. How oh, lucky do I feel right now? I mean, to span to span eras like that, I mean, there's some more we're going to see. Obviously, I know the five. So, I mean, to go yeah. from other things, what he's seen as a sort of more more recent club legend in, in sort of Palo de Canio, to then go back to Billy Bonds. And I mean, that's that's just incredible. I mean... He, he is... Probably the club class in, uh, and they, and they my, stick, is that pitch on as well. West Ham. Uh, no, yeah. it is, it is, it is actually, um, 
plastic. Oh, pre- oh right, okay. Oops. There you go. Amazing. Look at that. It's like how that's per- and, perfect condition, mint condition. That's amazing. It, Absolutely. Well, it, I mean, it is, but it is not. Well, yeah. There's a label. I've, I've had this for how long have I had this? I got this in 1988, and I got this off of Adco Trust General Director who sponsored the team at the yeah. time. He had that hanging in his office, and <laughs> I tracked them down and landline telephone numbers uh <laughs> handwritten handwritten uh, and I asked if they had any shirts and he said yeah I, I was uh, presented a shirt at the end of the eighty three eighty four season by Billy Bonds and I knew it and I thought right there's no way you're keeping that because you're a second <laughs> fan <laughs> and I was just I was all over him for about two years and in the end he, he actually uh, gave in and he Wow, that was in about nineteen eighty. That's 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 absolutely crazy. You you couldn't do that now because you just have a receipt. No, 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 absolutely no way that, no. you could hound someone no. for two years for a shit. No, <laughs> I, I, I actually stalked him. So <laughs> like, I, I used to phone him. When are you going to sell me the show? And it, it, it was like, oh. That's incredible. Unbelievable like, show to have. Unbelievable oh, of course, show yeah. to have. Of course. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, so moving on to number three in number your list. three. Now, probably my most favourite shirt in the collection. The 10th wow. of May, 1980, we played Arsenal in the FA Cup. Yeah. In front of 100,000 people. I was there, 13 <laughs> years old on the terraces. And... That was worn by David Cross. I swapped after the game by uh, Cross. He swapped it with Arsenal Campesy to Scott Willie Young, who I tracked down all of the shirts from the game. And, uh, and about 1990, I found out that Cross swapped with Young. I tracked Young down through a handwritten letter to his old club and all. Wow. Yeah, handwritten letter. I mean, was no... <laughs> and uh, he's opened a, a pub hotel in the Nottingham area. So I wrote him a letter and I asked uh, I have a collection of shirts. I wonder if you, and it was like, no, you can't have it. So again, I, it was like harassment. I it was like a new letter. <laughs> it, so in the end, I uh, flew to England because by that time I'd moved to uh, Sweden, where I live now, and I booked a couple of nights in his hotel. Okay. <laughs> and I went over uh, I and I asked him I think it was early on the Saturday evening I asked him if I could have it and he said oh Christ is it you and I said yeah yeah <laughs> in the end I think he just said yeah here to stop it <laughs> yeah I mean it's 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 some just way to it. do it it's some way to do it so you just give it to you as well you, do, you have to yeah no wow to play. he said it was a quick because he had done a professional foul in the last couple of seconds of the game oh, and yeah. pulled down 17-year-old Paul Allen. And he said it's so quick for the tackle. <laughs> like you have to tell all the West Ham fans that. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone goes, oh, well, I remember when he he done the professional foul on Paul Allen. <laughs> I want to have a bad word against him, no unbelievable oh. tackle. Not at all, I don't know if they'd um, give you it today because I'm going back, what, uh, 25, 26 years. There wasn't a lot of value in them. Yeah, yeah. 
it was like a couple of hundred pounds at auction. Today, yeah. I don't. I probably think he regrets that he actually uh, oh. he sits on a couple of grand then. But like, <laughs> I'm surprised he's not stalking you now and trying to get yeah, it back. Uh, well, he, <laughs> he, he can try, but I mean, just speak about that shirt. I mean, you know, it's a, it's an away uh, one. But it, it's it's okay. beautiful. It is beautiful. It's admiral. It's got the the it, pipe in. It's, it's admiral. Oh, yeah, it, look at that. It has the Admiral uh, pipe in it's a cotton. It has a sewn on badge. Yeah. Oh, the badge is. Uh, but even the, the, the so collar, no, the collar with the big little V the bit. Collar, oh, the collar is unbelievable. And the badge is just. And the badge. Absolutely yes, perfect. Unbelievable badge. And, 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 and you know what? I'm not a West Ham fan in any stretch of the imagination, but apart from the. The home colours, West Ham in white with the the blue and claret on it. Yeah, is, for me, it's amazing. I love it when it, you wear that. Yeah, I do as well, actually. And uh, it's the last time we won anything. There we go. It's the well, last, it's, even better. It's, it's, it's the last major trophy that we ever ever even won. Better, probably even ever better won. than that, you got it for nothing, which makes it. Yeah, even more... yeah. I did. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you say got it for absolutely nothing. Well, I think he was totally fucking sick of me. He just said, "Yeah, have it." <laughs> <laughs> You've been pestering me for two years now. Here, yeah. you leave oh, me alone man. and don't come back. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable day, unbelievable day. Yeah, I bet. And it it, it's just it's it's it, it, it's surreal because I mean I go online now and I see people of my age, stature, and they say I. I have my program, uh, I have my ticket, and it's amazing. I think it was probably a hundred thousand 100, programs and a hundred thousand yeah. tickets, and there was ten outfield shirts, and I have one. It's You've got one of them. Yeah. It's just unreal. It's priceless, actually. isn't it? It's pr- yeah. When you think about it, that, when you think about that, it's actually yeah. crazy. Yeah, isn't it, I think. yeah wow. it is. And it's just, woof. <laughs> yeah. I have to sleep in that tonight. Now <laughs> let's get into number two yeah. then. Number two on your list. We're getting close to the the numero yeah. uno, but yeah. Nineteen seventy one. Oh, so Trevor Brooking. Oh, oh, number I mean, ten. It is like, talk about, le- like talk about legends, yeah. Trevor Brooking. Yeah. He 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 played in every game from when I was about 10 years old, up until he quit in 84, 85. And he was he was just probably the reason why I supported the team. He was just an unbelievable player. And yeah. I mean, if you think about a quintessential away yeah, for Hampshire, one it, it's the blue, the two uh, claret hoops. And he wore this at the end of the 71 uh, three players actually would have worn that shirt because there was uh, three players who wore the number 10. It, uh, Jeff Hurst, yeah. Jimmy Greaves, and to Trevor Brooking. So, I mean, it's, what a trio. it's not really a bad fit. No, <laughs> absolutely not. What a trio that is. I mean, uh, and it, it's an unbelievable show. It's a cotton, it's priceless, and it's the third Trevor Brooking shirt. I actually brought it over to England and I was going to ask him to sign it. And uh, in the end, actually, I didn't. It's just I didn't really want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't get... I've a Sharpie. So <laughs> I ended up just asking if we could have a picture with it. So there you go. That's just... Third a- Trevor Brooking. What, so what game? Uh, what game was that from? He he, a hundred percent. He wore that at Old Trafford away to Manchester United. I mean, what a hundred percent. I bought it from an, an ex player, Manchester United player, who got it from Bobby Charlton. Wow, wow. And, uh, the Manchester United player, he got it from Bobby Charlton, and the player's son had the shirt, and I he. He had it in an auction years ago, absolute years ago, when you could pick up shirts for three or four hundred pounds. Yeah. And no, actually, I bought it when 
And before Graham Budd went out on his own, yeah. he was um, he was a memorabilia expert for Sotheby's. Oh, okay. So I bought I bought it in a Sotheby's auction. It must have been 1998, 1999. But if it went up for auction today. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be bidding because it, it would just be like absolutely. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. It, it would be what I pay times ten. <laughs> yeah, the prices uh, would go go up. Yeah, uh, you, they're absolutely mad now. I mean, that's an amazing number two. So we're at your your final shirt, your number one. And I think as a West Ham fan, it can only be one player we've not seen yet. It has to be yeah. a match worn from this player. So you tell us what the shirt um, is. It is. It is. It's still in plastic. I refuse uh, yeah. to lose it from the plastic. Please it's, don't. It's, Please it's, don't. I know, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> it's a match worn number six, Bobby Moore. Wow. I mean, Bobby Moore. I've, I, you know, you, you talk about these legends. Every one, of, every one of them players is a legend for West Ham. But when you think of West Ham, I mean, even for me, that's that's the player that springs to mind. And to have a, a shirt that he wore in a game, I mean, that must be the, as, as it's probably number one, the pinnacle of, of your collection, mate. Well, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hundred percent. I chased one for years. I even yeah. um, talked to Bobby in eighty four, eighty five, when he's a manager of Oxford. Oh yeah. I went uh, to Oxford, and he said, I, "I don't have any shirts. I asked him for shirts, and it was like." And they all say, please don't meet your heroes because you'll be... And he was, he, was, he was a gentleman. He actually made me a cup of tea. Does he, a, does he make yeah, a good drink? Yeah, yeah, I don't know because I was fucking <laughs> shaking so much. I didn't really want to drink it. <laughs> Shit. I'm sitting here talking to Bobby Moore about his <laughs> shirts. Now, wow. there is a story behind the shirt. Um the 6th of March, 1971, West Ham played at home to Crystal Palace. And the Crystal Palace captain at the time is a guy called John Sewell. And he'd been there for 10 years. Yeah. And it was his uh, testimonial year. So he asked if he could have the shirt uh, after the game. And he was going to use it as a prize in his testimonial in a raffle. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. And so Bobby, he said, I can't, I, like, I have to ask because we only get uh, two or three shirts a year and we're not allowed to give them away. We're not allowed to keep them. So oh, yeah. he went away and asked and John Tuller got a shave. He's had a shower. He got changed. It was completely after the game. So he said, yeah, yeah, you can have the shirt. And he gave it to John Tool, who at the end of the season, he had the dinner and he he got the shirt back because on the evening that they had the raffle, it was yeah. his um, neighbour who actually won the shirt in the raffle. So he, he gave it back to John Tool who at the end of the season ended up uh, playing over in America at the old MSL, the MASL or oh, the MSAL yeah. or whatever it is. <laughs> and um, he, um, he ended up over there and he stayed in America and he tried to sell the show online a couple of times uh, and he didn't. And in the end, he went to a huge collector who I'm not allowed to say who um, yeah. but this collector was a Manchester United fan again we're ah. coming back to Manchester United <laughs> and um, he knew I had the George Best Fulham training shirt oh yeah signed by George Best and I had a David Beckham England match worn World Cup shirt so he proposed a swap, and yes, I'll do that swap a hundred percent. So, uh, but he would only do the swap in his house. He would only do the swap in his house, and he'd only allow <laughs> me in his house. So, I, I, 
That's not right. So I have to fly all the way over to Manchester. I have to take a taxi into a guy's house I don't know, and I have to hold a George Best shirt and a David <laughs> Beckham shirt. I don't know if this is going to go down too well. And, uh, <laughs> and we've done the swap, and it was nice. absolutely brilliant because I'd been uh, chasing one first. My dad took me, it was 1973-74. We were outside Upton Park and all the players were coming out and I I was getting the autographs and I asked for a shirt. Yeah, as you do. Uh, as you do, as you, you do, do, I suppose. As you don't. And um, so I got all the autographs of all the players. I got, um, actually I have the autograph book over there, but when it came to Bobby Moore, I didn't ask him for his order. I had to ask him for his shirt. And I just, I remember my dad on the way home on the tube. You can't bloody ask. <laughs> They're not theirs. They're the club shirt. I'm going to get one. And uh, so I would have been eight, eight then, maybe nine. And it took me until 2010 to get one. So Wow. 1974, it took me 36, 37 years. And in the end, I got one. And it, it, it's the only one I saw, even though I know a plastic football shirts have one. Oh, yeah. Even though you obviously keep collecting, keep collecting. Would you say, yeah, with with that in your collection, your collection is kind of complete with a match yeah. more, probably more. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anything yeah, after I mean, that is a bonus because that means. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like. <laughs> a Chamaksha or a Zod or a Kaleri or. Yeah. An Ian Dowie or. I mean, even if you can go up to Declan Rice. Yeah. Which I have a Declan Rice shirt and it's absolutely fantastic, but it's not Bobby Moore. Not and Bobby it, Moore. It's a complete different era. The players weren't allowed to use their shirts. They got uh, two, three shirts a year. They were passed down to the reserves the year after, and they just weren't allowed to keep them up. I've had uh, conversations with all the players from that era, yeah, and they all say, no, I don't have, I've asked them all. I've asked every single player I meet, every player. No, I haven't got any old shirts. No, I haven't got any old shirts. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't got any old shirts. And, and it, there was another one which I knew about, but it was hanging on, on a wall of a West Ham fan in uh, Canby Island. Ah, uh, right, wow, okay. And that got it's, just not gonna, it's just not going to happen, is it? It's just like, <laughs> hey, hey, mate, it's been hanging there for 25 years. Right? Yeah, yeah, no chance. It's going to stay hanging there. And you ask how much, and they go, yeah. No, it's not for sale. It's just like mine. I mean, it's not for sale. Of it's course. Just... Now you've got it. It's never leaving now your I've got it. No, no, no. no it's... So if I was going to a desert island, I would, I would, I'd be carrying that one in plastic. And I'd be yep. wearing the David Cross FA Cup one. Do you know what? I'll, I'll allow it. Because that, I mean, Mick, I mean, I knew this was going to be a great episode to start off with, but. It's, it's blown my mind. The collection, the stories behind some of the shirts, the stalking of the public. Yeah, the stalking. <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely terrible. And I mean, it, it, it was like free social media. Yeah. It's amazing. You say hello. And I say hello, <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> no, you still don't have to shout. It was what? It was. It was I imagine every single collector watching this, myself included, would go to them, them depths to get a shirt, you know, that, that we all wanted, especially being match worn. So, I, my hats off to you. It's a, it's an, an unbelievable collection, and I'm so happy I, I've, I've been able to speak to you about it. Thank you so much. Yeah, for, it's been absolutely great. I really appreciate about it. Them, actually. Yeah, unbelievable yeah. shirt. Now. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, there we go. There is Mix. Top five Desert Island kits. I mean, what a way to start off the series. Anyone after this is going to really struggle <laughs> to top that. We've probably started too too soon and gone straight to, to the summit, but I'm really happy that mix been here. Uh, that's it from us. We'll be back next week with another Desert Island kits. Be sure to smash a like on the video. And if it is your first time talking kit, 
be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. We'll see you all very soon. And as always, just make sure that you keep talking kit.